All right, so the NBA wasn't entertaining enough for you yesterday. How about more college football realignment that might alter the sport forever moving forward? USC and UCLA are bolting from the Pac-12 and headed to the Big Ten beginning in 2024. The Big Ten, Big 16, and most schools made the announcement official last night, leaving the Pac-12 in limbo with its remaining 10 schools. So this is what the Big Ten landscape will look like two years from now when the SoCal teams officially begin competition. Regional ties and conferences have vanished. Coast to coast from the two LA teams out west all the way to Rutgers in New Jersey. In case you're wondering how far that trip is from Newark to LAX, 2,448 miles, the longest flight in the Pac-12 conference as Washington to Arizona at 1,218 miles. Let's bring in our senior college football writer, Pete Thamel. What an absolute circus yesterday in college football. Pete, what is the reaction from around the Pac-12 with this big announcement? Well, uh, Matt, it's hard to overstate what a bad day yesterday was for the Pac-12 conference. You have to remember, Part of the reason why USC and UCA are leaving when they did was because the league was on the cusp of a new television deal, which obviously is going to happen after the 2023 season. So they're essentially entering negotiations and instead of pocket aces now with the, the LA market and USC football as the two biggest draws to the Pac-12, they now have to recalibrate the league and the suitors who would who would be paying for the Pac-12 and have in the past are now dumping more money in the Big Ten. So everything is spiraling wrong for the Pac-12 right now. And it's going to be a true test of Commissioner George Klyakov, who is just celebrating his one-year anniversary in the league, mm -hmm. how he puts Humpty Dumpty back together again out west. Yeah, Pete, it's a good point because if I'm looking at brands that are left in the Pac-12, Oregon has played for a couple of national championships. Washington's in Seattle. That's a big market. But in terms of marketability with the conference, now you could argue those two are the only ones left. It was similar to what we saw when Texas and Oklahoma bolted for the SEC. So now let's go big picture because, to me, this is where this story starts the implication of this move for the rest of the college sports landscape. It's a really good way to put it, Matt. Uh, Texas and Oklahoma were the first domino. This was the second. And now the question everyone's asking me is, when are, when, how quick do the next dominoes go? And as usual, the lawyers are going to win in college athletics because any movement from the ACC is going to require breaking a grant of rights and an exit fee that could be in the neighborhood of about $100 million. So there will be lawyers and there will be consternation if there are teams that get recruited out of or attempt to leave the ACC. And this is a moment where can the ACC recalibrate itself? Could it reach out west and try to get some sort of East Coast, West Coast league going in order to deliver both you know, major coasts for a TV market? Mm -hmm. uh, there will be some creativity uh, I wrote today on ESPN.com that there's already been discussions before this of the ACC having some type of unequal revenue sharing to take care of the Clemsons, North Carolinas, Florida States, the bell cows and the winners, and to try to close that financial gap. Yeah, and people are wondering, like, why now for USC, UCLA, there's a grant of rights where they can get out of their contract penalty-free, which is in two years, 2023. Can't do that in the ACC, which is why it's so expensive for Clemson and the rest of those schools. Pete Thamel all over this. Pete, good stuff. Thank you. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.